What's up, everybody? This is Jay Rich's Fitness, Health, and Mental Corner. So, the main reason why I made this is because within the nine plus years of me being a trainer, not only do you run into a lot of physical problems, but you also run into a lot of people's mental problems. So, you're talking about divorce, you're talking about uh, issues with a spouse or issues with family and everything like that. And what I started noticing was not only you're helping people physically, but you're helping people mentally tackle a lot of problems. And you become almost like a street psychologist. Like you'll go into thinking it's just fitness, but most of the time people will start coming back more and more for your guidance and for your counsel and knowledge. So I'm creating this channel based off of that is just, a, experiences of I, I've had and then B, also transitioning into another career. So I want to start getting into not so much lifestyle coaching, but helping people with problems that they wouldn't want to go to a psychiatrist for. So, like to talk to somebody that can give them more direction. So with that being said, we're going to tackle some topics. This it, These ones are short films. They're 30 minutes at a time. So it's not going to be these long, drawn out things. We'll focus on one topic kind of break it all down, and then uh, go on for the next episodes and build and build and build. So uh, the first thing is why working out is so crucial to developing confidence. I feel like fitness is a good starting block to confidence. I mean, you can't just create it off of confidence because I know extremely fit people that are not confident at all. So it's not like it's the only thing that helps, but uh, it is a good leaping point into becoming confident, looking good, feeling good, that that whole term of if you look good, you feel good, I truly do believe that. So that's our topic of the day, is why working out is so crucial to developing your confidence. When is a good time to start? That is the biggest, I think, hurdle for a lot of people is starting. There's never a good time, in my opinion. I don't think that you'll ever just tell yourself, oh yeah, today's the fucking day. What you need to do is just realize, if you thought about it, do it. That's simple as that. That's in life in general. If you're thinking about something, it's time to do it. If you're not even thinking about it, then don't do it. If you're not even thinking about kids, don't have a fucking kid. If you're not even thinking about going to college, don't go to fucking college then. But if it has crossed your mind and you have the income, because that's always the big thing, is money's a big uh, fucking stranglehold on whatever you decide to do. So if you have the income to do it, then do it then. So, and with money, there's so many different ways that it could thin out or you could you could use it for fitness. You can go to 24 Hour Fitness, which is 20 plus a month. You can get a personal trainer, which is a little more expensive than that. So the the more expensive you go, obviously, the more the closer you'll go to fitness. But it doesn't cost a lot. You can go to uh, Planet Fitness. It's ten dollars a month. So I would just say stop waiting and just get your ass out there and get up and go. And today's the day. Tomorrow should not be the day. Today would be my best advice. If you're really feeling like oh, I need to get my ass in the gym. Get your ass in the gym. So I would say piggybacking off of when is a good time to start? Now. <laughs> That's what I would say is start now. Do all that stuff now. Uh, you have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. You have no clue what's going to happen a week from now. But I do know this. If you don't start today and you start looking a week from now, you'll be in the same shape you are now. And you're not... It's just going to be a week harder to start. So start now and get going now. I think besides even fitness, that should be a life thing. Any positive idea that you have, start it now and stop thinking of tomorrow. and Because tomorrow will turn into a week and a week will turn into a month. And a month will turn into you'll blink and five years went by. And all these other big things start going into your life where you can't do that positive thing that you want to do. So start those things now. Get them going. How do I start? That's a big question I always hear. Uh, when it comes to starting, it's easy. Like anything like fitness related, go on a walk and then that walk turns into a jog and then that jog turns into a long run. 
you're just building. I think people want to go a million miles right away, and that's the worst thing you can possibly do. I think you need to uh, start slow. If you're not used to going to the gym, go one or two days a week. Then once that becomes easy, go three to four times a week. And once that becomes easy, then you start going to the gym and then you're riding your bike and then you're going to the gym and you're going on a walk or a swim or something. Like that. It just starts building. It becomes a lifestyle. And then you blink and you don't even remember not being as healthy as you are now because it's uh, something that you enjoy doing. So how do I start? Little by little. Don't go into these big jumps. Because if you go big, you'll convince yourself not to do it anymore. So if I go work out as hard as I possibly can, I never work out. My body hurts. I'm sore. Then you're going to you, tell yourself, oh, I don't. I, I can't go for four days because my body hurts and I'm going to hurt something. And you start uh, becoming your worst enemy. So start slow and just build. Anything that you, that you look back on your life. If you ever start something very slow and start building, it becomes this great foundation that you can go to. If you ever did anything fast, it never fucking works. Like, people always look at these fad diets and, oh, I'm going to do the Beyonce drink water diet, or I'm going to do the keto diet, or I'm going to do Atkins. Or, it never works because you have to dedicate your whole life to just doing this one thing for a month or for a week. And you get the results, but they came too quick. So it's all either water weight based or you're not building muscle. So you look skinny for that five minutes of what you wanted. But the second that you reintroduce foods that you're not used to eating or the second that you drink some water, you're going to balloon back up because that's what happens to your body is it just balloons really fast when you deprive it of things that it's usually, normally used to having. So start slow and build. Go to the gym, slowly build that muscle up, stretch. A lot of people don't stretch, and that's like the worst thing is you're going to the gym and you're lifting and working out and you're tightening up this piano wire until one day it just snaps because you're not stretching, you're not elongating. So with lifting and everything, find 15 minutes to stretch and elongate your muscles and do all that stuff. Like It goes in a sequence. Workout, stretch rest work out stretch rest work out stretch rest if you could do that you'll be absolutely fine and don't skip any of those things and sleep fuck people don't sleep enough fucking find some time and to get some really good sleep and uh you'll be absolutely fine another question is what do most confident people have in common physically this is a spin because I feel like there's a lot of ways to build confidence, but if we're just talking in the physical side, obviously, good muscle tone, abs, a big butt, uh, all that type of stuff. God gave you this. You can, you can cosmetically fix this, but if you're sticking with this, then this is going to stay the same. So work on everything else. I think that confidence doesn't just stay fit, though, because... We've all seen somebody with that body dysmorphia or in their, like that little man syndrome where there are these big brick houses and they'll run up to me like, oh, what's up, big guy? And you're like, dude, you're fucking two times bigger than me and you're calling me big guy? What the fuck? Uh, but it's all a mental thing. So I don't think that you, just being fit is the conf like where confidence comes from. I think it helps. I think that people strive every day to look like somebody else that they see on social media or somebody else that they see on TV. So I think that there is a huge connection between fitness and confidence. And uh, I would just say don't compete with the next person. Don't look at the next person on Instagram or don't look at the next person on TV or at the gym. Just look at yourself and tell yourself what is going to satisfy you physically. Like, what are you going to see in the mirror one day and be like, okay, I like what I'm seeing. I, I want to maintain this. That should be the end all be all goal because our bodies are all built differently. Some people genetically have broad shoulders and some people genetically have a bigger butt than others. So it's like, make yourself the best you you can make and don't try to make yourself the best what somebody else already is because whatever you believe in, and I mean, I believe in God. So it's like, he gave you that. That's what you got already. God kind of work with what you have. You, if you're 5'8", 
you're never going to be 6'5 if you're past the age of 30 already. So it's not like you can just stretch yourself out. You have to just work with what you have. And if you can, if you can uh, lock in working with that idea of working with what you have, your confidence is skyrocketing because then you're going to start appreciating yourself and not comparing yourself to others. And once you start doing that, your confidence will just grow and grow and grow because the only person you should be focusing on is yourself. I remember in sports, that was the main thing coaches would always tell us. Don't worry about the what the next guy did. Worry about what you're going to do. So I feel like if you could live like that and stop worrying what the next person's doing and start focusing on what you're going to do, fuck, fucking life is so easy after that. So I don't understand why compete with anybody else. Stay on your path, and I think you'll be absolutely fine. And uh, also, just remember... Just because somebody looks great doesn't mean they're confident. Everybody has insecurities. These big old, uh, you see these big old buff dudes and they can't put their arms down. Yeah, they probably got a little wiener. And when they got that little wiener, ain't nothing gonna cure that fucking confidence. <laughs> so it's like there is compensations everywhere. So I don't think that you could ever just be fully confident in one thing. I mean, fuck, look at me. I got a fucking bald head. But you know what? I can give two shits. Uh, God took the hair away. Give a fuck. I mean, he still, still gave me all this right here. He gave me all this, so I'm good. But no, everybody has a flaw that they don't like, or everybody has some type of insecurity. So don't see somebody and just think, oh, they must be confident all the time, and they must never have insecurities, or they must just be living this great life that I'm not living. If you feel that way, you need to start looking at what you do have. I think that's a huge misconception too because confidence, I mean, we'll get into all this other stuff later because we're focusing more on like the physical side in this episode, but uh, confidence goes into all these different sections. You could be smarter than somebody, you can be in better shape than somebody, you can be better looking, you can be funnier. There's different ways of building confidence and nobody on this planet has all of them. And no matter what they want to say, no way has all of them. Like I said, I have a lot of confidence, but that left me about six years ago <laughs> so i think that you just gotta be able to laugh at yourself people are so serious and they don't know how to just relax and just look at your flaws and accept them and laugh at them and then build on what you have if you could do that life would be easy as fuck and i think a big thing and i've dealt with this a lot when it comes to my career, because my career is personal training. I've been doing it for nine years now. I've done group fitness. I'm pretty much in the fitness side of things. There's not something I don't think I've done when it comes like teaching and meeting clients. I've had clients that are 90 years old. I've had clients that are five years old. And you have to talk to them and get on the same page and dissect just as much when you're dealing with a five-year-old as you are a 90-year-old. And vice versa. These people can teach you stuff. I learned a lot from my clients just as much as I was teaching them. So don't ever just go into a situation thinking that you're the teacher and that's all's going to happen. No, you learn a lot from these people. And uh, the big thing that I do know is people tend to worry about weight a lot, like the actual number. And that could play with your brain a lot. And that could bring your confidence down. And... And my advice, don't worry about the weight. It's more about the look. How do I look? How do I feel? Less weight. So me, myself, I'm 5'10". I'm 195 pounds. If you looked at me, a lot of people think I'm like 175 pounds because muscle density, all that type of stuff. But the average person doesn't get it. So when they come to me, they'll be like, oh, I, I'm 140 and I want to be 115. But you could be an unhealthy 115. I mean, if you go to the city or whatever city that you're living in, there are homeless out there. On a hot day, if that homeless guy takes his shirt off, fuck, it looks like Mr. Olympia. The guy's got a six pack and he's all shouldered out and everything like that. But the only reason why that is, is because he has a crack and donuts diet and he has no body fat because he probably doesn't eat a lot. And he doesn't have a lot of fluids in his system. So if you do that, your muscles going to show because there's no fat around him. So he might look like a million bucks from the neck down, but he's not taking care of his body. And that's not the body that you'd want. So 
instead of worrying about being 140 to 115, you should just build and get the muscle and eat right and take care of your body. And I swear, you'll go from 140 to 128 and you will look better at 128 than you thought you would have looked at 115. Because it's not a numbers thing. It's more a, a feel and a look and uh, inside. Also, people forget about the inside. If you feel great on the inside, I'm talking about what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're putting back into your system, uh, vitamins, replenishing. Uh, it will take care of you on the outside fast. And I think that that is something that's very missed is people think it's all aesthetic and it's all outward. No, it's inside first. You got to build. Anytime you're building something worth having, it's always inside out. So the first step would be build your inside, get the energy from what you're building on the inside, and then that will help push out because energy will have you do a million things. If you don't have the energy, if you don't have the, uh, I mean, energy is confidence, but if you don't have the energy and confidence to, uh, even feel like getting up, you won't get up. When you're super tired, when you get off of work, you have no energy left. It's probably hard just to brush your teeth. But if you do have that energy, your body's built to, we have to get this out. So when you do all, all that energy, you just gotta keep moving and keep going and going and going. But that comes from the inside, building inside outward. So stop worrying about the the number. The number is just uh, a lie. I I think it's and when especially when you go to like the doctor. That's the one thing I hate the fucking most. When you go to a doctor and they'll give you that stupid ass chart and be like, "Oh, you're five eight. You should be a hundred and forty. I've at a doctor's office. I myself have been diagnosed as uh, overweight since I was 12 years old because I've never been the weight to height ratio. But with doctors, people don't realize this. They can't give you specifics unless they're a specific doctor. So if you're going to your general doctor, he can't look at your body and by law go, yeah, I know you're 180 and you're 5'9", but you're a brick house and you're, you're in great shape. They have to go by that chart and, we, and whoever they see at 5'8", 180, they have to tell them that they're overweight. So that's why you go see a dietitian and that's why you go see a trainer. Don't listen to these stupid ass fucking doctors that just live the Western medical life and they don't uh, give you the right advice. So a lot of people are going there and obviously are, they're doctors and we idolize doctors in the Western hemisphere. And they're giving bad advice because they're telling you you're fat and they're telling you you're obese and they're telling you you're overweight. But they're not giving you the right direction to go in and they're not telling you, oh, well, your muscle mass index is different than your fat and they're not giving you specifics and they're just kind of brainwashing you into thinking, I'm 180 pounds and I need to be 140 for to fit inside this uh, chart and say that I'm healthy. That's all bullshit. So don't ever listen to some stupid ass shit like that. Because if there's one thing I hate, it's stupid ass shit that comes out of people that think they're smart. Uh, doctors, same thing. I know a lot of non-confident doctors. And these guys are supposed to be the most confident. And they have all the answers to everything. And they really don't have answers to shit unless there are specifics. And I, mean, I got one of my best friends a doctor, so I don't want to talk too much shit. But I do really feel like they give a lot of bad information because by law, they don't wanna get in trouble. So before you start getting depressed by going to the doctor and them telling you you're overweight, go to somebody a little more specific. Like I said, go to a trainer, go to a dietitian, talk to them, let them kind of test your body out and see where you're at physically. And uh, I would say go from there. And remember, I mean, we were just going about it the whole time, too. It's it's health overlook. There's a lot of, I mean, you can go see bodybuilders, and they look like a million dollars. But they're some of the most unhealthy people you'll ever see when it comes to crash dieting and uh, water uh, depriving. And when it comes to the shit they eat right before the meat to get their muscles all out there and their uh, vascularity going... Uh, don't 
just look at a body and be like, oh, the guy's in great shape. No, some of these guys die of heart attacks real quick because A, they do a lot of steroids, or B, they're doing human growth hormone, or they're doing all that shit to really kill themselves. So always dive deeper. When you see what somebody looks like and you like how they look, dive deeper. Ask them questions. Uh, do research. Research is key when it comes to a healthier step forward. You have to educate yourself. And nowadays, it's so easy to educate yourself. Go on to YouTube. You can go on to Google and search stuff. But make sure it's just not a one-stop shop. If you see one thing and you read one thing, read four more on the same topic and start formulating your own opinion and start kind of smashing it all together and creating your own. And then once you create your own, now you're educated on it. Now you could... If a conversation was brought up about this topic, you could chime in and have a lot of different facts to carry this conversation. So that's a big thing for me is education when it comes to uh, a look that you're going for. Because especially with social media being the way it is nowadays, a lot of it is bullshit. A lot of it is fake where just because you saw a picture and their waist is this big and their ass is this big, it doesn't probably mean that's really what's going on. They could Photoshop and photo tune and do all this stuff, airbrush and everything like that. Go see the regimen they're doing. Go see, see them physically and ask questions and don't get caught up on the social media side of it because no, like we talked about earlier, nobody's perfect. And I think that, yeah, just get off the perfection side of things. And I think that the people that are pushing the perfection side of things need to be a little bit more uh, realistic and be more real. I mean, even myself, I have this, this little company that I'm building now. It's called Jake Shakes, and it is a holistic alternative to getting vegetables in your system, getting vitamins in your system. And it's because I don't like eating vegetables myself and I drink them every morning. And I noticed that was helping my immunities, it was helping my uh, energy, all that good stuff. But I only post when I'm drinking it when I actually drink it. And then there was one day where I didn't drink it and I had a donut. And the first thing I did was I posted that donut because I knew for myself, I don't want to trick people all the time. I want people to think I'm just this super healthy guy that only eats clean and does all, no, I do have donuts, I do eat ribs, I do have a beer every once in a while. So I wanna make sure I put that out there so people could fucking breathe and not just be like, hey, what's up, Jake? With their fucking chest out the whole time trying to just suck it in and look buff. Fuck that. Relax your shoulders, be you. And when there's days that you eat a donut, fuck, post that shit. I think people need to be more realistic and stop uh scaring people into thinking that if you want to be fit, you have to only eat a certain way. You have to only lift a certain way. Fuck that. People are built differently. Your bodies adapt to things differently. Try a whole bunch of different stuff. Cross training is going to help when it comes to losing weight. If you're so used to doing something, your body's not going to burn the same calories or work the same way. Go do something completely different. I don't like swimming. I go to the swim. I go to this little old uh, gym over here, and it's all these old mermaids that are swimming out there, and my ass jumps in, and I go lap for lap. They will smoke. These women are 70 years old. They will smoke my ass. But for me, it's cool. It's, a, it, it's another thing when it comes to confidence. Sometimes you can be too confident, and sometimes you need to get humbled. And for me, I love it when it's time to get humbled. So when I jump in that pool, these ladies are dusting me. I'm trying to keep up, and I'm, <gasps> oh, shit. Okay, uh, uh, I'll get you. Go, go ahead. You can get in front of me. Yeah, get in front of me. Go ahead. These ladies are dusting me, and I have to take breaks, and they're laughing at me. And they're about four foot nothing little old ladies. So for them, it's a cool confidence boost, too, because if we do anything outside of water, I probably got them. We who? I'm crossing her. We fucking uh, play checkers. I'm younger, man. My shit's de 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 done. So I think that <laughs> that in any other stage, I got them. But in that one stage, in that one stage, they got me. So that boosts their confidence up. And life is about that. It's not about being 
the man at all times is about being confident but also realizing hey, I'm not good at this and then seeing something that is good at that and be like you got me and now your confidence goes up and it helps their day out so confidence is a healthy tug of war or it should be a healthy tug of war where you can't be great at everything all the time so it's like give up a little here take a little here and it doesn't really matter who wins because when you look on the other side of that rope it's you, not somebody else. So when I'm playing this tug of war, it's me giving a little here, pulling a little here. But on the other side, it's still me. So don't get so caught up in what everybody else is doing. Just try to focus and work on yourself. And we got five minutes left. Like I said, I'm, I'm keeping all these short. They're only going to be 30 minute ones because it just gets the point across and we can just kind of go from there. But uh, final thoughts of this whole little thing is stop eating the bullshit. Stop listening to the bullshit and start formulating your own opinions. Start doing what the fuck you want to do. But make sure it's a healthy physical tip and make sure it's that type of movement. I think too many people are following trends and following gear that people wear, diets that they do, and all the bullshit. Like, no, do what the fuck feels right for you and not everything's gonna feel right for you. And don't allow people to pull you out. If you did something you don't like it, hey, hey, man, thanks, I tried it, I wasn't into it, I'm gonna go do this. And start being a leader because leading also helps with confidence. And in the fitness side of things, when you decide to go a different direction and you're leading and you see people following you and you're like, oh, shit, I'm creating this movement. Oh, all right, cool. Your confidence rises up and there's never a stage in life where you can't become more or less confident. So, yeah, start leading and start stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and start figuring out what's right for your body. Because everybody's body is extremely different. If I'm going to tackle that all the way home, remember that. And uh, if you need a jump start, I'm your guy because like I said before... I have this new thing called Jake Shakes, and I post on my Instagram just like I'm gonna post this on YouTube. I'm also gonna post this on Instagram, and uh, it's just a healthier style of breakfast. So instead of eating a normal breakfast, you make the smoothie, you drink it down. That's all you're gonna have for the next four probably hours. And then what I tell people to do after that is drink water because water will give you that solubility in your body, and you're not gonna need to eat it at all. And it's just a, a, a healthier breakfast, B, a great energy boost. It cleans your gut out. It's going to clean your intestines out because remember, you have almost 20 plus feet of intestine in this little section right here. And with food and everything traveling through it, you have to remember stuff gets left behind. Because if I'm eating four or five times a day and the average human being only goes to the bathroom and I'm talking shits twice, if you're going five to two, seven days a week, there's going to be stuff left behind in here that just sits and bloats your body and swells your body up. So what I've noticed with these shakes is it helps clear all that out. And when that's clear, everything's moving right. When everything's moving right, you're less sick. You're less uh, susceptible to getting major illnesses. So it helps in that sense. And I wouldn't ever sell something that I didn't fully believe in. I was doing these shakes for three years before I ever got the idea to sell them and so I fully believe in them and it's helped my life out I'm never sick I couldn't tell you the last time I coughed it was almost to the point where I choked on water I didn't know I cough right most people because uh, uh, I, uh, 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 I forgot what it was even like to cough because I've done it in so long I haven't had a sore throat or a stuffy nose and since doing it it's helped a lot of people out there was a woman that uh, had rheumatoid arthritis and she couldn't make a fist and I told her, I was like, I don't know what this does. I just know that it's going to like clear your gut out and it's going to help you with your immune system. But let me know what's up with your hands. And five days later, she got a hold of me and said, hey, I made a fist for the first time in months. So it helps out. And if you need that type of help, feel free to get a hold of me. My Instagram is jrich.fit. I post a lot of stuff on there. You can reach out to me there. It's all free delivery. If you're living in another state, I send it to people for free. So you might as well try it out and let me know what you think. But besides that, this is episode one. I'm extremely kind of extremely excited to do this stuff because there's so many situations that I go through 
at work or at life and so many uh, things that I see that I want to share with people. And I'm glad that there's platforms like this to share this and start my next stage. And my next stage really, besides fitness, is helping people mentally, uh, being there to almost it'd be like a life fitness health coach where they can call me and we can talk about stuff and help them out and give them a, more of a direction because I feel like when I hear them go to psychiatrists or I hear them go to uh, doctors and stuff like that, they get a general view, but they don't get that specific and they don't really get that like either pat on the back or kicking the ass. And I think you need one of those. I think when you need a direction, it's either you, you get a pat on the back or you get a gentle kick in the ass. And if there's one thing I'm do, good at doing, it's helping people go in a positive direction with a nice kick in the ass. So I'm extremely excited to start doing more of these. And uh, thank you very much for listening to the first ever 30 second or 30 minute clip of Jay Rich's Fit Lifestyle and Health coaching. So have a great day. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.